Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Deeper Roots. This is our first episode, so let me introduce this podcast for you. Deeper Roots is a podcast ministry from Iglesia Bíblica Baptista Vida Nueva, which translates to New Life Biblical Baptist Church, and we made it to answer the common but difficult questions that you might have. We notice that these deeper and complicated questions come up, and they get answered in this lecture style, where follow-up questions and opportunities for deeper understanding aren't really encouraged, and that seems to be something that prevents people from coming closer to God instead of actually getting closer to Him. And that's something that Deeper Roots wants to change. For example, today, we'll be talking about the question, why do Christians tend to be so hypocritical? That question was submitted to us by a teen in our church's youth group, and we dive into this question and let more follow-up questions get answered. This is meant to be a conversation where we aren't afraid to ask these hard questions. If you want to ask a question, or even follow up on a question that we're already going to be talking about, you can go to ibbvn.org slash deeperroots. That link and others will be in the description, but there you can find a link to Google Form to submit questions. Thank you for joining us on our first episode, and let's get to it. I think that's, first and foremost, I think that's an important question. And like you said, one of the most common questions uh, young people also ask and just general people ask. And I think they also the understanding of the reason why is also going to be critical to whether we allow hypocrites in church to either be an obstacle to us in our spiritual walk or not. So I think it's a great question to begin with. But I think it also merits a little bit of exploring as far as what is meant by the question. So I wanted to ask, what do you guys think is meant by the question when they ask, uh, why is there hypocrites? Do you think they're referring to mostly people that live double lives? Or is it because they've seen maybe people do things that they, surprises them uh, that Christians would do? Or what, what do you think is the behind the question? I think that... Uh hypocrites in the church are when somebody asks that they probably they probably not just immediately seeing some guy like going out and doing like you know bad stuff like they see him at uh at so-and-so bar or so they see them at so-and-so events but rather probably starting off like the small like there's like small gossip about people and uh you know and we know that gossip is a problem and it's a sin to to talk about uh, to bring lies and to bring, uh, yeah, to just bring gossip among the church. We know that's a problem, but I, I feel like that's sometimes what people think of first when people say, "Oh, they're, they're hypocrites," uh, and that's how they start opening their eyes and say, "Wow, these people are not uh, not models. These people are not uh, the Christians they they call themselves to be." I think it also becomes a problem when people start talking about like, "Oh, you need to do this," right? Uh, people are. I guess the fear is like, I'll talk and no walk. Uh, Christians often are like, oh, you shouldn't, uh, shouldn't have tattoos. You shouldn't, uh, like, you shouldn't have these things. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't do those things. And yet they go around and maybe they're not doing those specific things, but they're doing other things that at least culturally speaking, we all have come to the consensus that they're wrong in doing. Like, uh, I can't really come up with an example right at the moment, but I think that's like the... Like One drinking of the big or going out to yeah, the clubs on Friday exactly. nights and then they show up on church and, and are serving and stuff. And I think that's important to st- as, as a starting point just to define what exactly um, is behind the question as far as what the definition of a hypocrisy is, right? Or what type of hypocrite we're talking about. Because when the, that comes to my mind, you know, there's two types of hypocrites that could be behind the question. Uh, for example, right? Like if you think, well, um, so-and-so... Is gossiping right and maybe they did gossip and and that's a good example of something that should not be done as a Christian yet it is a weak area for many Christians right and sometimes I think maybe the idea of uh, well there's so many hypocrites in church is also based on having the wrong concept of what a Christian should be I think a lot of people have a, a skewed view that the church is supposed to be this place where everybody's perfect and that no one struggles anymore, and that there's no uh, sin anymore. And that's one of the things that the Bible is very clear about, that we uh, do still struggle, and it's going to be a lifelong journey in just trying to grow more in the likeness of Christ. And along the way, there's going to be stumbles. There's going to be people that fail. There's going to be people that are going to do things that are wrong, but 
I guess the main thing is if that person lives it as a lifestyle or whether it's something they repented on and they're working on. Because then there's the other type of hypocrite, which I think is also behind the question, well, what's in the mind of the person asking this question is the person that they know is living a double life. And I think that's really what the Bible uh, more mostly concentrates on. Because the Bible gives it, gives it as a given that we're all going to struggle. We're all going to struggle with sin through our lives, but we're supposed to be on this quest to get dealing with it better and better and better. But the main key is that if we're repented about it. But then there's the others that are just pretending to be a Christian and they're not Christian at all because they live a, dev a double life and they have no, uh, no, no sense of wanting to be better, no sense of repentance, and they live a double life. And I think today especially, I don't know what you guys think, maybe you guys can jump in here, I think it's exasperate, exasperated more because of social media. Because, you know, it's so easy to live a life online uh, with privacy settings. And people see all this stuff where you sort of select who's going to see what you post and everything. And But some people do see it and it's like, wow, this is totally not the person I know in church. Well, I think the, the problem isn't... I mean, it, it, I think that's a part of the problem. Like, people are able to comp compartmentalize their their daily lives they're able to do that because of social media they're able to do that because of uh the not anonymity anonymity excuse anonymity, me yeah. of <laughs> the of social media but also just between groups of friends and everything mm -hmm. like you yeah. can be anonymous from uh, uh like with the people at church by putting on one mask mm -hmm. and then you can be uh, uh you can be anonymous with another group of people when you put on another mask you don't know who that same, who that person is anymore because it's always different. But I don't think it comes and is only coming from the problem of like we don't see some people sometimes, so they just change when they go meet another person. But I think it's also along the lines of um, dang it, words. <laughs> um, You're basically thinking no. about like. Um... Whether they're thinking about double life you're talking about? Or? Well, not necessarily just double lives. It just... I think the biggest one that people think about is, like, people don't work to improve when they say uh, something rather than, like, they're pointing fingers all the time. Like, don't smoke, and yet here I am drinking all the time, mm -hmm. right? That kind of, like, that's a bit of... That's something that I've seen, but it's, uh, it's something that a lot of non-Christians look at Christians about. It's like, hey, wait a second, you're still doing that wrong. There could also be a sense of attitude and pride as well. Um, and oftentimes, if you see a hypocrite at church and they don't see themselves as like trying to hide anything, like, like the pastor said, it could be a thing that they're working on or something they haven't seen yet. Or it could be that they uh, see themselves as having something a little bit... Uh, they see themselves that the fact they're going to church is able to cover up for these other issues but it doesn't really it doesn't answer for the fact that that the sin is still occurring and like you said there is i think there's a there's a there's a point there too to be said um sometimes there is that kind of christian that uses going to church as a way to calm your conscience you know what i mean where you know you're good, living badly uh you know you're doing things wrong in the world or you're living a double life but yet you go to church to feel better because somehow uh, God sees that, you know, that I'm at least going to church. But I think what we have to remember is the scripture says that God sees the heart. And he, that's re what, what I really wanted to touch on first as far as what kind of hypocrite are we talking about? Because there's the hypocrite that might uh, serve to be a suddenly blocked to others that is just simply because the person who's being um, offended doesn't have a right concept of what a Christian is, that where, you know, sometimes the person's just working on things and they're not meant to be perfect and they repent and they, and they continue on. But I think, like I said, then there's that Christian who is living a double life, who is totally playing the two parts and just uses a, a church as a way to calm their conscience. And I think that's the real hypocrite we have to talk about. A, that church is not a, is not a uh, museum of perfection. It is a hospital, so you are always going to have find people working on stuff. You're going to have people dealing with uh, their anger issues. You're going to have people dealing with trying to get better at not being a gossip. 
not lying. And I, and I just preached about that, about lying, you know, because it is a, one of those pet sins that people today sort of defend. And we're all guilty of that, to be honest. We're all guilty of that. So yes, uh, we as Christians will fail and, 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 and we're going to have our, our, our failures along the way. But I think the, the kind of hypocrite that we really need to talk about and what the scriptures say is about the hypocrite that is living a double life, that really has no desire to be better, but it's just living two lives and uses church as a way to calm their conscience. Because I think that's what you were referring to, right? Yeah. That basically <laughs> you come and you, and you use it as a platform to just feel better about yourself and then go do it. It's basically nothing different than when people in the Catholic Church. I mean, I don't want to talk about Catholics, but I mean, that's something we know in, our, in my family. You know, the, we sometimes use uh, religion just as a weekend thing, go and confess our sins, have the priest uh, forgive us, and now we have a license to go and sin again. And, and that's not Christianity either. Yeah, so. there was a, it's a passage in Romans, I, I, maybe you know the, the reference directly, but it's just, I... Uh, Paul is talking to uh, uh, talking to the people for, for his letter. Uh, it, did Jesus come to save our sins just so that we can go sin again? No, of course not. Yeah. Um, but I guess like from there, maybe we want to go on to like the thought of like, is there like some sort of like superiority complex? Do you think comes from yes. like just generally from being a Christian? Yes, I think Jesus spoke about that in Matthew fifteen. If you guys have your Bibles, you guys could go there, but. Uh, it does come from, uh, there is an association to legalism. That's what I'm saying, okay. legalism. Um, Jesus said that in verse 7 through 8. It says, hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, these people draw, me, draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And then in verse 9 it says, in, in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. And sometimes there is that level also where, uh, people uh, are set at, at such a high standard that the scriptures doesn't really set because we teach as commandments of men things like like for example you know if you wear if you're a girl and you wear pants you're sinning you know or if you're a guy and you wear pink you're wrong you're sinning yeah, as well, well we know that those aren't like biblically wrong we know exactly. like, like those are just like stuff that society and men or like people humanity has just put on on itself and that leads to that whole concept of thinking that as Christians we're supposed to be perfect. We're not. It's just sometimes because not only do we not understand that we're, we are going to fail along the way, but sometimes the standard is set so high to a point that the Bible doesn't set it. Like we make up, like it says, you guys have the doctrines of, it says teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Sometimes uh, you just make other people feel inferior to you because you want to pretend to be so high and, and holy by doing all these other things yet you, you mess up on the bigger stuff. And that's what Jesus also said. You know, sometimes we um, can concentrate on little things like, oh, I wear a tie, so I must be more spiritual than so-and-so because he doesn't wear a tie. Yet, that's superficial, but like it's an exaggeration of what really goes on in our minds. Exactly. But, but then that's the thing. You use that to feel superior to someone else. When the Bible doesn't say, thou shalt wear a tie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, then, and it's just you use it as a cover to be able to to feel better about yourself, and then you're sinning in other areas which the Bible does speak about, like loving your neighbor, and there's a, or having compassion, or having forgiveness, you know, or, or all those different areas. So then sometimes we can um, be the cause of why people feel there's hypocrisy in the church, because when we allow for legalism to happen in the church. There also is a, there also is a, is a, is a, is a hint of irony there as well, that when you do call out somebody for being a hypocrite, you also have to sort of look at yourself too. It's not. It's I'm not trying to like put, trying to protect the people who are definitely sitting in their place. But when we see a problem, we shouldn't feel superior either, because that's what only breeds more contempt, what breeds exactly. more slander. Yeah. The blind point fingers at the blind at that point. Right, mm -hmm. and, but that's that's what you're calling another person. It's like, oh, look at that guy, blind guy pointing finger at the blind, and now you're another blind guy pointing another finger at the blind, and that just becomes a whole spiral of it and that sort of comes from our our being human our being proud of this is what i did as a christian i bring people to the church and then you see another guy he's not doing what you're doing it's like well look i'm a little bit more superior and there's there can be a sense of pride that happens there there is yeah there is and that's why i think in matthew 7 that's what jesus was talking mm -hmm. about when he says you look at the speck and 
your brother's eye, but not consider the plank in your own eye. And that comes from the legalistic part. That sometimes we can be uh, very legalistic, uh, looking at other people, and we point out the little uh, details, when I myself am uh, guilty of that and worse. But going back to the original question, though, um, what about how do we apply it to people that do live double lives? So, so, so far we've talked about people and legalism and maybe uh, looking at someone that's failing and so we la allow that to be a, an obstacle in our lives. But what about people that literally are living two double li two lives? What do you think? I think that we need to bring the question back a little bit more than that because what people, I think what I, what I definitely struggle with is more about people uh, being like saying things but not trying to improve that same thing within themselves oh yeah so like of course like it's a double like it's a double life because like you're you're trying to be a christian and trying to like be of guidance to someone right that's something that like we all want we all want to be that person from proverbs that i uh, that when proverbs tells the reader you need to uh find wise counsel we want to be that wise counsel but then we never end up actually doing our own wise counsel sometimes so i think that's where a lot of people get the idea of uh, wait no you weren't you're doing the same thing or you're doing something that i would consider just as bad so why it so why are you telling me what to do and i think that goes back to the whole teaching of putting our eyes and keeping our focus on jesus so the reason is because also when it comes to like you're saying um people say do something but that they don't apply it to their lives if that's something that's constant in their lives, then you are talking about, again, about a person who is living a double life, right? Because you're preaching one thing, living another thing, right? Especially if you're talking about someone who has the opportunity to be a teacher, right? To be a mm -hmm. preacher or a teacher. But at the same time, we go back to the other uh, section where I think it's also a part of misunderstanding that just because you're a teacher or just because you are a preacher doesn't mean that you're not working on things yourself and that you have to also apply the word for it to yourself and then those are things that you will need to work on and have to work on and you will fail you know uh, along the way as, as well and sometimes they, the the listener might be thinking okay well the preacher should already have this completely down or the teacher should have it completely down and it's not true yeah i mean there's if, if that was the case nobody would be qualified to teach except Jesus. Do you think that admission of like one's own mistakes, one's own sins is enough? What do you mean? Like, do you think that the concept of uh, like, I'm like, I know that I uh, am wrong. I know that I need to work on this thing in my life. I know that I need to uh, work on it, but this is what the Bible says. Do you think that that should be enough or do you think that is okay? That, those are two different questions. Do you think that is enough for like a non-believer or for someone, uh, for like the listener for, for the podcast today? Do you think that is enough for them to uh, maybe just like forgive the over, like forgive that just for them, to, for people to say, I know I'm not doing well in this and I'm trying to improve? Well, I think it's a beginning. Definitely it's a beginning. You have to understand the right concept of what true Christianity is. Because if you have this concept of perfection, you're always going to be disappointed. People will always disappoint you. And that's why we go back to the whole point of having your eyes on Jesus. Because he's the only one that will never disappoint you because he's perfect. But in church, whether it's a pastor, whether it's a teacher, whether it's a deacon, you're always going to have people that are going to be also going through their own struggles and through their own things that they need to work on. And uh, what you want to see is a genuine desire to work on them and not just to be, again, going back to the other part, which is living a double life. And that's where, like I said, if it's someone that's not, it's just preaching, but lives completely a different thing and has no remorse, no desire to fix it, and just living a double level life, then that's another type of hypocrite, which Jesus did speak about as well. And he said in 2 Timothy 3 that it would be unfortunately commonplace in the church. In the last days, mm -hmm. because you know, Second Timothy three, when it describes the last days and and the characteristics of what we would say society today, when we get to verse five, it says uh, having a, a having a form of godliness. You know that they're going to be religious, but these are the ones we need to stay away from. And it's in Second Timothy three five, 
Uh, it's talking about people that are really just going to be pretending. They're going to be playing a part. They're not the genuine thing. So I think that we need to differentiate between those two type of, in quotes, hypocrites. The person that is genuinely trying to every day grow and be a big brother or a teacher and stuff and still working on their things as well uh, and has a genuine desire to change and, and help people. And then there's the other types so it's just what the Bible would call false teachers. You know, it, they, all they are is teachers or preachers or teaching the word, but it doesn't apply to them at all. You know, that's what I'm, I'm thinking. And the Bible speaks about that in the in the parable that tears. I don't know if you can go ahead and go there to Matthew 13. Let's go back to Matthew 13, verse 24 through 30. It Matthew says, 13. Yeah, 20, um, Matthew 13, verse 24 through 30. He says, another parable he put forth to them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who saved good seed in his field, but while his men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, do you not so, did you not sow good seed in your field? How does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let them grow, let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, First, gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So there is always, see, this is not something that surprises Jesus. He already knew it was going to be part of the church. There's always going to be tares amongst the wheat. And that's the, the, the Christian who wants to succeed, the Christian who wants to, like I preached this morning, to fly like the eagles, has to sort of make peace with that, that there is going to be hypocrites in the church. But your eyes need to be not on those Christians, but instead on the genuine Christians, which are going to be also Christians working on their own things. But the difference between that hypocrite and a Christian who's a sinner <laughs> is just that the Christian who's a sinner is trying to work on their sin and, and every day sacrifice it to the Lord and try to be the better person. I think we can go, I, but don't you think we have to go a bit further than just like, instead of looking at the Christians that are working on their lives, like, why, why do you say we need to look at the Christians that are working on their lives rather than just saying we need to look to God? Well, because we do have to put our eyes on Jesus. That's, that's one thing. That's our focus. But we do need mentors. The scripture says, just like Paul said to the believers, he said, follow me like I follow, follow, uh, follow Jesus. You know, that's why we have imitate me like I follow, you know, like I imitate Jesus. That's why we have leaders. That's why we have uh, good, uh, that's why we have role models as well. Like our role models, we should be knowing that these people are also fully human. They have their own problems. Uh, the Bible is full of great role models who all have their sins and their thorns on their side. Uh, one of the things that we talked about a little bit earlier was, uh, was Daniel. Oh, not Daniel, my bad. David, King David of Israel. Uh, when and his time with uh, Bathsheba, mm -hmm. uh, he he knew that was a problem, or he probably didn't see through to himself that it was indeed a sin that was that was so great. It wasn't until Nathan brought it up that he did tear his clothes and he was he was repentant about this after the after the time. Was he was he a hypocrite when he talked about when he? Uh, rebuked the man in the parable who stole the sheep from his poor yeah. thing. He was a hypocrite, mm -hmm. but he found that out as well. Uh, and this was something that even with our role models, our role models do have their own weaknesses. We can keep them accountable, but we have to understand that mm -hmm. they are human. We are human. And if we, uh, King David is a good role model for a majority of the story. And he was a role model in showing how he could repent and how he could try to better himself. And the book of Psalms has a lot going on about him repenting and trying to find the grace of yeah. God again. And that's, I think, that's more than enough for us to call him a good role model. Uh, and across the story, he does have his problems, but we're all people. That's exactly what my point is. That That's what really makes a good role model. It makes a good role model a person that is willing to learn from his mistakes and admit, I think also admitting their, their mm -hmm. mistakes. 
Uh, I'm going to share something which just happened this weekend. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for me, it was hard to admit something. I, I, I failed someone and I overlooked something. And I and that person was really hurt by it, was very hurt by it. And, and, and this person came and confronted me about it. And, and like I, I told this person, I'm going to say, thank you. Thank you so much for letting me know. I would, a, I would have gone um, being ignorant about it. And the person would have continued being hurt, and the person would have maybe let that harbor, uh, become a bitterness in their heart, and they need to leave church about it. And and second, because it helps me learn. Like I told her, and you know, when she uh, when she told me, I'm like, okay, thank you, thank you so much, and it gave me the opportunity to say sorry. You know, and I think that's also part of the uh, of being a leader. You have to be humble, and as a pastor, I think there's a lot of room for improvement in that area. In modern pastorship today because sometimes the role of legalism has brought pastors to think that we have to be holier than thou and we have to be perfect or never share uh when we're going through stuff or please pray for me because i'm discouraged yeah uh, people sit, think that's like a sign of weakness and i think like you said in this in the example of david it's on the contrary i think it's a sign of strength he, fa he failed but he knew how to Get up, and that's why I said he was he being a hypocrite in that moment. Yes, was he was was he a hypocrite in the sense of living his life? life? No. no, Jesus says he was a man after God's own heart. So, so I guess that leads to I guess like a sol a potential solution to like uh, Christian hypocrisy with air quotes, right? I uh, I guess a potential solution could be open communication, right? Mm -hmm. If someone feels like they are hurt. Because of due to one's to someone's hypocrisy, then they should uh, be like they should uh, confront they should. the person who hurt them. I, and this is something that we have to deal with with bitterness, with anger. This is uh, something that the Bible tells us to do. We need to uh, we need to be able to confront and talk to people, be yes. communicative instead of brewing in your anger. Exactly. Your yeah. So you have to uh, talk to them. Be slow but to wrath. As a, as a brother, right, and as a, or as a sister in Christ, I feel like the, the idea that there is, uh, that that's what sort of causes the break in a person's life, especially as a person who has grown up in the church, seeing hypocrisy shattered my, shattered my, my innocence about how a person is. These leaders, they're not perfect. One of my teachers uh, divorced and married again. And now she's divorced again. And then I, what do I do there? You know, like this is this isn't how it's supposed to go. And they'll carry on with the rest of your life. It's a very normal adolescent. You learn, you get this really early on. It's a normal thing to see hypocrisy and make make a way on you. You want to see these people as role models, but when you realize that these people aren't the role models you want them to be, that's when things fall apart. Yeah. That's when you start doubting, and that's ultimately that's what led to a lot of the people I know. Uh, leaving the church and for for good they could come back absolutely but they have lost this innocence and now they're trying to find their own truth at, in, in the end so like I said it goes back to a part of the problem is the, the, tr the way the church has created this idea that being Christian is supposed to be that we're perfect mm -hmm. and we're not and, and, and legalism plays a role there you know where we sometimes make up so many different rules that it's un unable to even keep them, you know, and then everybody looks like a hypocrite because nobody can live to that standard, right? Uh, but secondly, uh, like you said, then there's also the whole thing that we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. Yes, we have to, that's, we have to understand church is a hospital. Church is a group of people trying to get better, trying to do better. What God wants to see mostly is really what I think that's what the, the, what he's saying when he talks about David, a man after God's own heart, he wants to see a heart that really wants to please God. In the midst of his difficulties, in the midst of his failures, that he's willing to get up, recognize them, and continue going and continue working on them. And, and I think that's different than the other type of uh, uh, hypocrite, which is just the tears, what the Bible's talking about. You know, because there's always going to be also. Uh, people that are just going to be playing a part in the church. And that, I think, is also we have to be aware of and we have to understand Jesus is not surprised by it. Jesus says that he allows them to grow together because just uprooting them would also uproot the wheat. So he says, you know, he's the one that at the end is going to make the judgment. 
you know, call. Yes, there is a role for church discipline and all that stuff. We can go into that another day. But as as far as God is the one that's going to reveal who is a, a, being a hypocrite and who uh, needs to be dealt with in, in his own time and stuff like that. You could, you could also put a different, a different a twist on that same parable. Who are you going to look up to, up to in the church? Mm -hmm. You're going to eventually see, as you grow older, who's the good role model, who's the bad role model, who is the person you want to follow in their footsteps and, you know, learn from their mistakes and who are the people that, you know, you, in your wisdom and the, that you've learned and that you've grown into, pray for in the future, not just having this, like, a heart of, this of disdain but seeing them as a person that is growing alongside you mm -hmm. and i think also uh just to finish the, the the thought is that i think we also like matthew 7 says you know we help we as the person that's being affected by hypocrisy we as the person that's seeing hypocrisy have to also come to the point in it to examine ourselves because we're all hypocrites in one area or another if we're going to define it that way where it means that we're not living up to what we say we believe if we really examine ourselves we all fail in one area or another we're all struggling in something we say yes this is wrong but yet we practice it or we tend to still pra uh, fail in that area consistently so that's why i think matthew says hey examine yourself first it's because as, as long as i'm focused on me and comparing myself to jesus that's going to help me not to be focused on the hypocrites you know and and not let that affect my walk with the lord because he's going to be my constant reference point just to compare myself to him because to be honest all of us will have something that we someone can call us hypocrites on all of us yeah yeah and then um that's why a definition what is a true hypocrite there's not there's christians that are struggling with things but they're improving and they're repenting and they're uh like the davids you know and then there's the hypocrites that are living double lives. And those are the tares that are growing in the, with the wheat. And at the end of the day, it's God's job to reveal them and to deal with them. That's his job. And uh, we just have to not put our attention on them. That's my thoughts. Okay. Uh, I think that it's also extremely important that we uh, put our thoughts on primarily Jesus Christ. Right? Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is the... Uh, mm -hmm. like we, we can't look to each other to, like, like, like you said many times already we can't look to each other to be perfect none of us are going to be perfect at some aspect in some way if we are at all trying to uh, like promote what the gospel is saying we're going to be hypocrites i uh, i've said this in uh, a class and uh, i think like i i believe that this is still very much correct uh we can't we can't be perfect we that ship has sailed already we can't be perfect but we can live uh, perfectly like as in like the adverb, uh, God Jesus didn't give us a, a wild goose chase of a mission to live as close to uh, to who He is. Jesus wants us to be perfect, mm -hmm. but while even though we've already sinned, that ship is sailed. We're already going to have to deal with the consequences of our sin. We can move forward and try to be the people that He wants us to be, mm -hmm. but that requires us to actually uh, do that. Uh, listener, if you have anyone who's actually, if you feel like there is someone in your life who's being a stumbling block for you, talk to them. And uh, if they fail to recognize why, uh, what that stumbling block is, maybe they're not the person you should be looking to. There is a, I'm not sure if there's anyone in your life who's going to be, a, uh, who can serve as a role model. There are certainly people in our lives we can, who we can use as role models. But uh, it's important that you uh, find someone who can help you in your uh, in your path in your walk, and not just one person. Try to find another a community of people, people who are experts mm -hmm. in their own ways, uh, in their own different areas. Like you're gonna find someone who uh, like they can really help you with like maybe a drinking problem, mm -hmm. right? But maybe uh, they have uh, another issue of their own. But there's this other person in your life who can help you with that issue that they're having. Not everyone's perfect. So it's important that you take the time 
to uh, expand your uh, like, like expand the people you reach out to. Mm-hmm. Let yourself be like it's hard to reach out to people. It's hard to confront people about the things that uh, that make you uncomfortable or that, that put you away from being a better Christian or from being a Christian at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, you need to be able to confront and not only that, but also distinguish and forgive and forgive and forgive. I think that's the other thing too, regardless of whether the person uh, admits to their mistake or not, uh, whether he's a hypocrite that's made a mistake and is willing to work on it or is the person that doesn't care and they're just going to make you look like the like the little goody t- tissues and, and say, oh, whatever, don't make, don't get in my life and it's living a double life, you still have to forgive them because it's yeah. only going to make you better. And that's where we practice Jesus' words where he says, forgive them for they know not what they do. Uh, even the hypocrite who's living a double life, you know, they're blinded. They're blinded. Either they don't a, know they're, that they're, they're not being a saved. hypocrite. Yeah, they're not saved or they're a very, very cardinal Christian and they don't know that they don't know they're being a hypocrite. Or so, maybe, yeah, like, Maybe they just don't know that they're doing that sin. Like, yeah. they can be, like, I, I've been victim of that many times. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't know that I uh, am hurting this person. And yet, when they, like, sometimes they don't even come up to me. Sometimes this is, like, years after they've left me as a friend. And, uh, yeah, you I just, like... You I, weren't aware of that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But, like, that's why we need to continue having that open communication. That's such a big problem yeah. nowadays. People don't talk to each other. But it's important that we start talking to each other. We start, uh, and we start forgiving each other. We start uh, learning from each other. And encouraging each other. And encouraging yeah. each other. Whoever asked the question, thank you. That was a great question. And I hope if someone's being a stumbling block in your life, uh, you A, put your life, uh, your eyes on Jesus. And like Derek said, you know, just uh, find those who are truly trying to be a Christian. Uh, that doesn't mean perfect. That means... That in the midst of stumbles and falls, you're going to get up and you're going to keep trying to be a better Christian every day. Thank you for listening to Deeper Roots. If you want to submit a question, follow up on something we talked about on the podcast, or you want to find us online, you can go to our webpage, which is ibbvn.org slash deeper roots. Deeper Roots is a ministry of Iglesia Biblica Baptista Vidanova, which is a local church in Castro Valley, California. And you can learn more about us and our church by going to our website, ibbvn.org.